What if I told you, you could print shimmering opals, bottles full of liquid, and jewelry more detailed than the eye can see? A resin printer can make the impossible easy, and they're almost as safe and cheap as the film and printer you already have. Today's episode is sponsored by Siraya Tech. Their special engineering resins enable some of the gorgeous prints that you're about to see. People think resin printing is expensive, they think it's hard, and especially they think it's dangerous, but don't believe the hype. Resin printing is just as easy to do as printing with a regular printer, and if you follow some basic safety steps, resin is both practical and completely safe. You friggin' nerds are so scared of resin, it's making me close-minded. Well, if I can't get this through your heads, I'm gonna aim for your heart. Okay, Optagon, pull the warmest, friendliest, and all-around nicest maker in all of 3D printing. Hi, I'm Billy Rubin. Apparently, I'm the nicest person in 3D printing. Engage Australian English translation. Um, I used to help moderate the 3D printing subreddit, and I still help moderate the larger 3D printing Discord. And I have a YouTube channel that I just started recently where I do weird stuff, but also interview a maker every week, which is very fun. Billy, I got a crowd of raging nerds who insist that resin is just too toxic to exist. <laughs> what should I tell them? It can be really risky, but if you mitigate those risks, it's pretty easy to work with. So um, it's just like learning to use any tool, really. Like once upon a time, a knife was really dangerous to you because you were a child. And now you probably use knives all the time to do all kinds of things um, safely. And it's much like that. The fear of the unknown is worse than the thing itself, generally, almost always, in fact. So what kind of safety equipment do we need? Like bunny suits, <laughs> clean rooms, glove boxes, decontamination showers? I think at a minimum, some nitrile gloves. You can't use latex because um, the resin melts latex gloves, kind of interesting. But nitrile gloves and a respirator mask rated for volatile organic compounds. If you can smell it, you're doing it wrong. So what about cleanup? Is your workshop just permanently coated in a sticky layer of resin? It's just about organizing yourself. Like just, I know I'm gonna need to clean it, so I need paper towels and isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush handy, you know? Like it's it's just about thinking slightly ahead and having all that within hand's reach, I think. If you plan well and you think about the steps in the process, you can set up an environment that makes it really easy to clean up. And I would definitely recommend doing that. And then you can just, as you go, just wipe things on a bit of paper towel. And then as you go, Nothing gets particularly dirty. And then when you're done, you just gather everything up into your fists and take your gloves off over the stuff. And then it's all nice and neat in this little package you can just chuck in the bin. <laughs> so resin printers do need a bit more work than FDM printers and uh, they need a bit of cleanup too. You're also gonna need to run through things like gloves and paper towels, etc. But is the result worth it? Totally. Oh my God, they're beautiful. The prints you can pull off those printers are just astounding. Like the detail and the cool things you can do with it that you can't do with FDM. Like you can really easily make your own colors. You can add glitter and stuff to it. You can make fully transparent parts. You can make things that are waterproof pretty much off the printer, which is hard to do in FDM though possible. Um, love it. Love, love, love resin printing. <laughs> it's kind of all the things you wish FDM could do. It does. <laughs> But Billy, a printer with all these great features must be crazy expensive, right? Resin printers are even cheaper than FDM printers um, by like quite a lot. You can get a photon, an Anycubic photon for like 200 bucks and it'll come with resin a lot of the time. They're really, really simple mechanisms. There's just so little that can go wrong with a resin printer. Um, so they just end up being really, really cheap. And the detail is crazy. Like if you like doing any tabletop gaming or making keycaps or jewelry or anything small, like, oh, It'll blow your mind. It blew my mind. <laughs> I know that the resin costs like twice as much for as filament. Does this mean that resin printers are just really expensive to run? It totally is, kilo for kilo, but you also use less of it. Like for one, you're making smaller things with resin generally. You're making really detailed objects, so they're like, gonna be smaller. But number two, you hollow the models. FDM models need infill, but resin prints don't. You can print them just totally hollow with a little bit of support inside. It's like just printing with walls, I suppose. It would be if you only printed with two or three walls, that would be like it in resin. But the support material is different too, right? In FDM printers, you need these big, chunky, wide supports, but on a resin printer, it's just these little spindly roller coaster things. What's up with that? Whereas in FDM, you're trying to support the bits that are 
being built um, on resin, you're actually trying to use it to hold it to the plate because your biggest risk in resin is it coming off the plate. So in a resin printer, there's a piece of film at the very bottom of the tank and underneath that is the screen and the light and stuff. And the, the build plate lowers into it. So it cures the layer and then it tries and then it lifts back up to peel the print off this film down here. And so the whole time you're basically fighting the peel forces from below and the peel forces from above, potentially this will be too strong down here and pull it off the plate up the top. But yeah, it's rare. As long as you have enough surface area touching the build plate, it won't happen. So could that pop like rip a hole in the bottom of the resin vat and just spill resin all over the place? I've seen it happen, but it's really rare for an FEP film to break. Like you kind of have to be jabbing it with a spatula or something. I had to replace my film once. Did you stab it with a spatula? <laughs> what did you do? What happened? <laughs> I'm not gonna say I didn't stab it with a spatula. Aww. What do you use instead? I like using a like an old credit card to scrape the rest of the resin out of my tank because that kind of has enough flex that, and it's like plastic, so it's not gonna scratch it too much. Silly Billy, you're supposed to buy tools with the credit card. What else is in your kit? Old toothbrushes are freaking great for cleaning. I love a good toothbrush or a like normal paintbrush. Yeah, you don't need you don't need expensive tools. So what are the tools for? You gotta do some stuff after the print is over. Yeah, so it is, there are a few more steps. Like you pull it off the printer, you clean off any excess resin and you cure it. And then you pull off any supports or anything. So there is an extra step of curing it and cleaning it. But for the results you get, it's so worth it. Like, so worth it. <laughs> so I use one of these UV spotlights to cure my print afterwards. I assume you've got some like super expensive cure box. For those who don't know, resin printers cure in ultraviolet light. And after you've pulled a print from the printer, you need to do a post cure just to fully set that print. And you take it out into the sun. Uh, that's how I do it. And it'll just cure in the sun with the ultraviolet light. For nail art, they use ultraviolet lights in um, like gel tip fingernails. So you can just get one of those and it works. It's the same bandwidth and everything. It works for prints. Okay, but what about the fancy pants turntable? You gotta have the fancy pants turntable. No. <laughs> It's like so cheap. I'm like, nah. <laughs> all in all, would you say that resin is harder to print than FDM? I actually, and this might be a contentious topic, but I actually think resin is a significantly easier than FDM. I know. <laughs> um, and I think this for a few reasons, mainly being that resin machines are just so simple. They're one axis that does this rep repeatedly. There is like so few things that can go wrong with a resin printer. Almost always either leveling is incorrect or they're printing too cold. If your prints aren't coming out, it's almost, almost definitely one of those two things. FDM, there are so many things that can go wrong. Like your filament can be dodgy, it could be wet. You have like a billion different screws and belts and axes and they could all be wrong or some of them could be wrong or just one of them could be wrong and good luck working out what it is like with, with resin there's just so few things to check it's I, I just reckon it's so much easier suppose i already have like an ender 3 or another entry level printer it's payday and i feel frivolous do you think i should spend that money upgrading my current printer or buying a resin printer Totally get a resin printer. Resin printer was my second printer and loved it. Would never go back. Would never have not have a resin printer anymore. And another FDM printer would just like, you know, you might get a slightly bigger bed or something. And what's that really? You'd stop gluing a couple of parts together. Like it doesn't change your world, but resin printing will change your world. You could do so many different things with it that you won't be able to do with FDM. You can do such tiny parts, such tiny little things that you just wouldn't even dream of doing with FDM. Glossy things, waterproof things, glow in the dark things sparkly things. I'm just going to keep saying glitter because glitter. I love glitter so much and my partner, he hates glitter, hates it. He calls it the herpes of craft. But if I can print the glitter directly into the part, then the glitter never goes anywhere because it's already in the print. So it's safe glitter. So I get to use it. You can get this flaky glitter called unicorn glitter or unicorn flakes and they use it for nail art again. Um, there's lots of crossover between nail art and resin printing. Just check it out. Lots of cool things going on in the nail world. Um, and yeah, so you can get unicorn flakes and put that in the resin and it comes out looking like an opal because it's layered um, and, and this, the glitter's being pressed flat every time. It actually has natural flair like a real opal. So I was just like, magic. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> Brooke is a professional makeup artist, so we actually had a whole bunch of different glitters to try out. And I can tell you the mica glitter, the ultra fine stuff, works the best. Gives it this gorgeous opalescent look. 
So what other stuff can you add to resin to modify it? Colorful stuff, any color you want. You could mix any color you want into resin, which is really, really cool, I think. So if you're trying to match Pantone colors, that's awesome. A lot of people use alcohol inks. Um, and I have one that's actually specifically made for dyeing resin. And it's made by a company here called Monocure. And they have a little CMYK kit. Um, so you have yellow, magenta, cyan, and black, and you can mix any color on the planet from those colors. So it's less wasteful as well. I only have clear and white resin and I can mix any color I want. So I'm not, you know, letting stuff go to waste on my shelf or just collecting dust or whatever else. I think that's amazing, especially being down here in Australia. We don't have that many FDM choices and like, you know, we don't get all the cool spangly stuff that you get up there in, in the USA. Um, so yeah, it's really amazing to be able to make my own custom colors and, and put glitter and stuff in things and change the change the color over time so like these i said were printed ah! and they, they they come straight off the printer like this because i started out with white and added a bit more clear and added a bit more clear and then started adding purple and then got to there so over the course of the print i'm just adding a bit more color um as it goes so when you say transparent you're not talking like transparent filament transparent you're talking like transparent resin transparent how transparent is transparent resin like Transparent, transparent. The only thing is it slightly yellows sometimes if you over cure it. These prints aren't the best because <laughs> I think I had some layer shifting, but they are really transparent. Like it, it's like glass. I'm making a um, chess set and I'm gonna make them all little tiny potion bottles and we'll fill up liquid in the inside to designate which side of the chessboard they belong to. Um, yeah, but you can just pull things off and they are waterproof, which is great. In these potion bottles, there are like a couple of specks of glitter because the print I did before was glittery. <laughs> if you had a print that you'd already hollowed and printed and you wanted to add something into it, you can clog up those, any drainage holes. I'd, I've just used a syringe that I covered in aluminum foil, tin foil, um, and then took it out into the sun and squeezed resin from that syringe into the little holes. And then it cures almost instantly when you're standing into the sun. So it, um, it, that's a, a really easy way to close up any holes. And then you can just fill it with stuff and then close up the last hole. What are some of your favorite projects that you can only print in resin? Keycaps. Amazing. I love the whole keycap world. Um, and, and it's the only part I like about mechanical keyboards. I do it all wrong. I only like the keycaps. But you can do so many interesting things like cool shapes and interesting colors and stuff. But I like embroidery keycaps where I embroider on top of them like a freaking lunatic or like an aquarium spacebar with actual liquid in it that you can move around. Other things, jewelry is huge. 3D printing has been used a lot in the manufacture of jewelry for quite a few years now. Someone contacted me and they were going to Japan and they were going to propose to their girlfriend while they were over there and um, she knew that they were going to propose and everything um, but they uh, didn't have the rings and they weren't going to get made until they got back. So they wanted some 3D printed ones they could put on her finger just for the for the day. And I was like, ah, yes, I would totally do that. And printed a bunch and sent them off and got there just in time. And it was it was very fun. I just love doing things like that. <laughs> so do resin printers enable you to work with metal? I want to try printing a mold and then using silver clay. Ah, it's so cool. It's a metal clay and you just use it like like Fimo or like polymer clay. And then you just stick it on the stove top and it sinters into a fully metal part, like totally 100% metal. Yeah, so I'm like, you could just print a fully metal thing off a printer, which I think would be really cool with the flexible because it's a flexible kind of like silicon, like it's really flexible on, on the resin printers as opposed to TPU, which is like kind of flexible. A lot of people think the resin prints are all like brittle and fragile. Like how true is that? Generally, the standard resins are a little more brittle than FDM, but you can get stronger resins like Syriatech Blue is a lot stronger. Um, you can also get flexible resins and you can mix the flexible with the normal to create varying levels of flexibility, which is quite neat. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest parts of 3D printing with resin. Like if you're printing with filament, right? Your print's gonna be 100% stiff PLA or 100% saggy PETG or 100% uh, stringy TPU, but with resin you get to mix the perfect blend exactly the way you want it right yeah i had trouble with 100 percent flexible on the the style i use the monocure stuff so yeah i think yeah you want to mix it <laughs> standard resin also distorts a little as you print it the dimensions you get are exactly what you put into the model it's actually the resin that's inaccurate the printer itself is pretty sharp for a lot of projects, this doesn't even matter, right? If you're printing dragons to put in your dungeons, no one's gonna notice if its horn is like a millimeter too short. But if you're printing functional projects and prototypes, you're gonna need tougher stuff with tighter tolerances. You're gonna need resin from today's sponsor, Syriatech. 
Their blue resin is actually crystal clear, but it's almost as strong as PETG, and I found it accurate down to 0.5%. I use some to improve my wearable computer. If resin is your destiny, your pick should be tenacious. Just 5 to 20% of tenacious mixed into any cheap resin will make a mixture that's almost as tough as PLA and even easier to print. My personal favorite has to be their fast resin because I can print each layer in less than two seconds. You guys know how much I like printing stuff fast. Anyways, check out all of Soraya Tech's resins by checking the links in the description. Okay, so Billy, hopefully we've shown the masses that resin printing is easy and most importantly that it's safe, and we've inspired them with a whole bunch of new projects to try out. What should they do next? Watch my videos, because I'm selfish. Um, <laughs> no, um, try resin printers. Uh, go to a makerspace if you can, or find someone with one, and just give it a go. Um, or just buy one, they're super cheap. But you have YouTube, so go look at my videos. Billy chats with like a different charismatic maker every week on her channel, and her podcast style interviews are just delightful. Uh, I put some links to those in the description, and also while you're down there, she just released a pair of posters that sum up all the tips that we talked about today, and you can download both of those like from there as well. There is a 3D printing channel on Zach's Discord, which is great, and there's loads of helpful people there, and we will help you there too. I guess I should have mentioned earlier that Billy is one of our Discord mods, so this entire interview is a giant conflict of interest. <laughs> Totally, yes. <laughs> it's very conflict of interest. This is all nepotism. Thank you, Billy, for showing us some incredibly creative projects and reminding us to respect the resin, but don't fear the resin. I suppose I should also thank our other Discord mods, My Fair Julie and Techniac, and also shout out the second most delightful woman in my life, my wife slash camera person, Brooke. Thanks for lending me your glitter. I'm not giving it back. Void Star Lab would be Void Star Lonely without the support of our magnificent Patreon patrons. Our lab assistant supporters are Bill Schuller, Tech, the Antifa, the whole thing. Olivia Yiptong, Jason, Rusty Flute, <laughs> Akelia, Varka, Anthony Mincarelli, Zenforian, James Berry, Robert Breeze, Sam Wampler, Michael Dunn, Gregory Jones, Tech Daddy, Powerful CCH, Azundo, Taranak, Daniel Cadwell, and Roger Pinko. Mega huge hyper thanks to our Patreon collaborator, I'm Not Betacorn. They changed their username and thought I wouldn't notice, but I did, and I hid their name somewhere in this very episode. If you would like to join their noble ranks, visit patreon.com slash Zach Friedman. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, both at Zach Friedman. And also, Billy better see you on the Void Star Discord or you're gonna make Billy sad. You don't wanna make Billy sad, do you? Thanks for watching. I hope to see you safe, sound, and printing resin in the future. What's your serious face look like? Uh, I don't think I have one. <laughs>